Natalie Reynolds is a 26 year old content creator who has a huge following on a lot of different platforms like Kick, YouTube, TikTok, Twitter, and more. In the past couple of weeks, Natalie has become so controversial for her sake of clout chasing that she is becoming known as a female Neon or female Jack Doherty. Even if you've never heard the name Natalie Reynolds, you might know her by her controversies like sending strippers to a retirement home, being cruel to animals, staging kidnappings, or daring a lady with mental illness to jump into a lake who could not swim. Natalie started posting on TikTok in January 2022. She started out by posting dancing videos, but quickly transitioned into IRL pranking thirst trap videos, where she did things like dancing in front of random men in the grocery store or Home Depot while barely wearing any clothes. She also made a similar video dancing in front of a fake cop with a fake cop car with flashing lights on in the background. This realistic looking cop and the car will be important for later on in the video. Natalie was also an OF model, and that's how she became friends with Jack Doherty. In February 2022, Natalie and her boyfriend Zach were featured in extremely cringy Brain Rot Jack Doherty videos, where Jack would pretend they were all in a three-person relationship, and Jack would do weird things to Natalie in front of Zach. I'm censoring pretty much everything, because YouTube keeps putting limited ads on my videos if I say anything slightly inappropriate. And, you know, Bills needs to pay his bills, so yeah, I kind of have to censor it just a little bit. But again, I guess they are fine with Natalie wearing no clothes in every one of her videos and thumbnails. Natalie also has a lot of similar pranks in Target and other stores from 2022, but my eyes have already been burned enough. These videos have millions of views compared to her other videos, and this is the state of the internet today. Apparently, if you want to get rich quick, just film yourself violating and harassing old men in public without wearing any clothes, pretty much. In August 2022, Natalie started uploading to her YouTube channel called Natalie. She only has 65 YouTube videos, but has amassed over 5 million subscribers and 653 million views on her channel. She did this by clickbaiting and again barely wearing any clothes in her thumbnails. Natalie's Twitter account is just a bunch of repetitive garbage. Even when you look at her tweets posted almost a year ago, they all pertain to the following subjects. Calling Neon's girlfriend Sam fat, joking about Neon being Middle Eastern, calling Neon's manager an Illuminati member, and calling Jack Doherty a thief. But knowing Jack, that part about him being a thief is probably true. Natalie says she signed a contract with Jack when she became an OF model, and he stole a ton of money from her. But we'll get more into that later on in the video. Around March 2023, Natalie started posting street interview TikToks, including one video of her asking an elderly man in a wheelchair if he would rather have $100 or spend the day with her. And she does all of this right in front of his wife's face. The couple is clearly uncomfortable and tries to nervously laugh it off. She gives him the $100 bill, but knowing Natalie, I wouldn't be surprised if it was fake money. She would also prank middle-aged men in public by asking them kiss or slap. Then, if they said kiss, she would lie and say she's only 17 years old to make them look like PDF files, even though she was 24 at the time of recording the videos. If they pick slap, she's not talking about her face, and then she'll turn around. At this point, I really wanted to factory reset my iPhone because of how cringy and brain rot this content actually is. She did this same kiss or slap video with women and there are thousands of these videos on her TikTok page as of today. After this, Natalie went back to wearing barely any clothes in stores to dance in front of old men and then started wearing the same outfits in the public interview videos. Then, in May 2023, Natalie started posting rage bait fake podcast clips to get in on the gender war. It seems like Natalie wanted to become the next Just Pearly Things, but her clips are obviously scripted for the TikTok. Then, in June 2023, these clips started featuring Jack Doherty. Natalie uses the same formula on TikTok to this day of violating and harassing people in public and posting rage bait gender war clips. Natalie abandoned her YouTube channel eight months ago in October 2023 to become a full-time IRL kick streamer. This is where she really went off the deep end. This is also around the same time Natalie stopped being an OF model and started exposing Jack Doherty for scamming her and stealing practically all of her OF money. In November 2023, Natalie went on a Twitter campaign calling Jack Doherty a broomer who surrounds himself with girls waits for them to turn 18, and once they do, he makes them sign a contract with no end date for them to become OF models. Because of this contract, they allegedly have to give the majority of the money they generate on OF to Jack. These are some of Natalie's tweets about the situation. I am terminating my OnlyFans contract with the scammer Jack Doherty. This kid has done nothing but take advantage of everyone around him. Disgusting. Tried talking to the scammer multiple times over the last year. Discussing what this kid does and nobody knows it at all. Jack Doherty is the modern day H-Slur dictating everyone around him. 
I remember one of his hoes crying because her OF made $1 million and she got 5k a month. I want to delete my OnlyFans. Stop contributing to ruining the generation and be a normal person and make good content. I was the first girl to associate with that scammer a couple years ago. If you don't think I know everything, you're lost. Disgusting industry of fake friendships and lies. The reason why so many creators compare Natalie Reynolds to Jack Doherty is because leading up to their departure from the YouTube platform to kick, both creators had a dying channel on their hands. Ones that not even the most severe forms of clickbait could save. So Natalie and Jack both moved their content to kick, where they did a complete 180 from the creators they used to be. Now they both make their money by violating and harassing people in public. In December 2023, Natalie and her friends streamed a quote prank where they plastered a huge sign that said free candy against the U-Haul truck. At the beginning of the stream, she said she's going to be doing a social experiment and actually has free candy in the white van. She says everyone knows parents tell their kids to watch out for men in white vans giving out free candy. So she wants to be creepy to kids and see what happens. She goes up to a mom with three young sons and brings two of the sons over to the van. English is the mom's second language and she trusts her sons to go with Natalie. And it's just an extremely stupid and disgusting prank. I guess part of the prank is to scream in the kids' faces once they get to the van. So Natalie tells her friends not to scream at these kids. But why does she go through with everything all the way up until this point and then all of a sudden notice she's in the wrong and feel guilty at the last possible second? Or maybe she's just pretending to feel bad for the views. At the end of the stream, Natalie gets arrested. On December 25th, 2023, Natalie tweeted, Jail isn't what I expected. Got locked up in a cell with some random girls and they took a bleep in front of me. She also wrote, Police arrested me last night thinking I kidnapped children and had three helicopters in the sky searching for me and 15 cop cars. I'm finally out of jail. W. It turns out her entire arrest, the helicopters, the mugshot, and being put in jail was also just all a fake stunt for views. This just adds more and more layers of stupidity, especially because it's illegal to impersonate the police. Natalie has had people impersonating the police in her content for years and has never had any consequences for it. A lot of people thought the cops on the stream were real and thought she really got arrested. But just like she had those realistic looking fake cops and cop cars in her TikTok videos promoting her OnlyFans, it probably wasn't that hard for her to hire the same fake cops to pretend to arrest her for the kidnapping stunt. The next day, Natalie tweeted, Apologies to everyone who was upset about the free candy van prank. My goal was to do a social experiment video and give away candy and tell kids not to ever trust strangers. No one was injured and parents were aware and present when I gave away candy. I apologize to anyone who was disturbed and didn't know we were making a video and the officers involved. Happy holidays, heart emoji. This is obviously stupid and a huge lie. She didn't do this prank to teach kids about stranger danger. She did it for money, clout and shock value. And again, there were no real officers involved. It's absolutely insane that in November 2023, Natalie said she wanted to become a normal person and start making good content. Because she said all of this before daring a lady with mental illness to jump in a lake on stream. In December 2023, Natalie received a huge amount of backlash for wearing no pants to a gym and painting jeans on her body, completely exposing herself and violating everyone in the gym. As the workers told her to leave, she laughed in their faces saying there's nothing wrong with her outfit. This is just textbook indecent exposure. At this point, Natalie uploaded a clip from this stream to Twitter and wrote, Guy in the gym presses me for wearing painted pants. She got community noted on Twitter and the note says, The man in the video is protecting the overall gym etiquette according to which you should wear clothes suitable for exercise. Wearing unsuitable clothes or none at all is considered to be disrespectful towards the others. It is also a huge hygiene risk to others. In January 2024, Natalie started hunting on her kick streams and showed herself unaliving animals uncensored. Also in January, Natalie was banned for three days on kick a few hours after a clip of her hunting and unaliving a crocodile live on stream stream started to circulate all over Twitter. On January 24th, Drama Alert tweeted, Streamer unalives a pig live on stream. This is just disturbing. She needs to be banned. The next day, Natalie responded, Where do you think meat comes from? The people complaining are the ones who eat Chick-fil-A. I will be running it back. Again, Natalie is playing dumb, acting like this is a debate about where meat comes from and meat eaters being hypocritical. But that's not the point at all. The point is she's doing all of this on kick for shock value, clout, and money. If it was really just about eating meat, she would have done it off camera or never hunted on kick in the first place. Now we have arrived at the most disturbing part in the timeline. 
In May, Natalie convinced a woman with mental illness who couldn't swim and was allegedly homeless to jump in a lake for 20 bucks. Natalie's actively trying to get the footage from this stream wiped from the internet because she and her friends could be charged with attempted murder for this prank or social experiment or whatever Natalie wants to call it. On May 29th, 2024, Natalie was streaming at Lady Bird Lake in Austin, Texas. She told a woman with mental illness to join their scavenger hunt and jump in the lake for $20. Swimming in Lady Bird Lake has been banned by the city ordinance since 1964. In the video, you can hear her say to the woman, you should just jump in right now. She also made pushing gestures at the woman's back and was somehow shocked when she actually dove into the water head first. The woman started to say she only knew how to float and not swim and said to Natalie, you said it was okay. You told me to jump in. Natalie laughed and said, no, I didn't. You said you wanted to swim. I didn't tell you to jump in. Then Natalie and her friends ran away, leaving the woman struggling in the water. Off camera, you can hear the woman yelling, I can't swim, I can only float. A couple of bystanders told Natalie and her camera crew to leave. And so Natalie's claim to fame is that she never abandoned the woman and she only left because she was told to. Obviously, this is a bunch of BS and just another tactic she uses to avoid any and all accountability for her actions. The stream ends with Natalie and her friends driving away from the lake as fire trucks speed to the scene. Right before they drove off, while they were watching the lady in the water, her friends say the situation is really bad. And Natalie says, stop, seriously, you're actually freaking me out. I'm going to effing unalive myself. She says she's drowning. The Austin Fire Department confirmed that firefighters were called to Lady Bird Lake that day to provide medical assistance and that a person was pulled out of the water. In a follow-up stream, Natalie defended all of her actions. She said she only left because her team told her to and claimed the woman approached her first and dared her to jump in the water. The day after this all happened, Natalie completely lied on Twitter writing, I was kicked out of location and was demanded to leave while others helped. She was floating, not sinking, crying laughing emoji. Even after abandoning a helpless woman and leaving her in an extremely dangerous situation she caused, Natalie still can't take a single ounce of accountability for her actions and thinks it's all a huge joke and just laughs at it. In a follow-up stream, Natalie defended all of her actions and said the entire incident would be forgotten in a week. Right after the original stream went up, Moist Critical reacted to the situation. And you know, once Moist Critical reacts, you know it will never be forgotten. dollars to jump in and that, oh, she'll follow once she jumps in, this and that, and then basically it's just trying to farm her for content so that way the stream can laugh at this lady jumping in the water when the streamer never had any plans of doing so. And their interaction lasts like 10-ish minutes before the lady jumps in the water, and it seems as though she's quite vulnerable. So it's extremely fucking sad to see her being exploited by this kick degenerate here, and put into a position that's life-threatening, because allegedly she can't swim, which is why the fire department eventually got called, which you do see on stream a bit later. Natalie responded to his video on stream in her usual disgusting mashup of victim blaming, deflection, denial, and manipulation tactics. Time to bounce. We're gonna scram now, good luck. Cause they told us to leave, bro, come on. Like if you said you watched the stream, you would know, but he's gonna, he's gonna leave those parts out to make me look as bad as possible. And they just leave her there. That's- Oh no! She's left there, but there's five people there trying to save her. Insanity. And they laugh about it because people like her don't treat the other human beings around them as if they're real people. To her, everyone else is just an NPC, a prop that she can use for content and nothing else. That's the extent Isn't he- isn't that what he's doing to me right now? Ah, uh, yeah, we have like bombs and stuff, so that would freaking suck. Would you be able to hold this for a little bit? Yes. <laughs> oh god, I feel so bad for Nick right here. Is it because you're afraid of getting- Yeah, I don't like it. Okay, I feel bad because me saying this is definitely what fed into the segments. Charlie says that Natalie doesn't care about anyone else's lives and just sees other people as NPCs who can be used for clout. And she says, isn't that what he's doing to me right now? But no, Natalie, he's not putting your life at risk by calling you an idiot in a YouTube video. The YouTube videos that are calling you out are not equivalent to you abandoning a woman with mental health issues to drown in lakes and streaming it all for attention and clout. 
Charlie says he usually wouldn't give attention to an obviously attention hungry monster like her, but live streaming attempted manslaughter is where he draws a line and he will make a video on her. After this, Natalie tried to cancel Moist Critical and went on a smear campaign against him on Twitter. In a now deleted tweet, she wrote, YouTuber Penguin Zero clickbaits and uses old woman almost drowning for views. On January 10th, 2024, Natalie was banned again. But if I say why she was banned, YouTube is going to give me limited ads for the third time this month. I'll just put it like one article describes it. She got freaky with an inflatable doll live on stream. And I guarantee you, I don't know how, but YouTube's gonna try to limit my ads on this video again. Today, Natalie's reign of terror is still going strong. She'll get banned here and there, but I'm pretty sure every ban for her is just another dopamine hit. But this has been the Natalie Reynolds situation explained. Apparently in 2024, all you have to do to become rich and famous is violate and harass men, women, and children in public and commit attempted manslaughter live on stream to a bunch of young viewers. It's crazy how she can do all of this, make millions, but if I share a fan's experience of getting taken advantage of by a scumbag YouTuber, I get limited ads and my entire channel gets shadow banned for a couple of days until that entire situation gets resolved. Unless platforms actually start stepping in and stop doing these BS three day temporary bans, this degenerate behavior will never end. But these three day bans are what attracts these terrible live streamers onto the Kick platform. Kick was literally made with no rules and this opened the floodgates for terrible creators to come onto the platform and misuse the lack of TOS. These streamers now treat regular people on the street or in malls as a form of content because they see dollar signs when they see strangers running normal everyday errands. But let me know what you all think about this situation in the comments down below. And make sure to subscribe to the channel because you're extremely close to 200,000 subscribers and it would really, really help out the channel and I would really appreciate it. If you have any creators you want me to look at and try to expose, you can comment them down below or DM me on Instagram or you can join the Discord. Links for all those will be in the description down below. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.